starting oh look at that just in the nick of time the coffee <laughs> has arrived and we got a Where's green mine? light <laughs> it's on. on its way here we go no! We're gonna get the JP. Holy cow, that was loud. I don't know if what was louder, you or the intro to our show. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to a Thursday edition of Bid Nerd, your daily nerd out on the most interesting cars of the day on all the automotive enthusiast auction sites. I'm not even going to say them all anymore. It's too no. much. I can't. It takes up half the show saying all the different auction sites. Yeah. We always run late when we run through them. Um, your uh -huh. volumes are still a little low. Even our little uh, bumper header thingy was uh, quieter than you. So hmm. a little micro adjustment. All right. So I yap you. Uh, I Folks, if you're out there watching the show and the audio seems a little low, let us know in the comments. Uh, this is a live show right now. So let us yep. know. It looks like uh, on the board everything is the way it's supposed to be, but... Who what the hell do we know? Not only do we not know anything about cars, we don't know anything about making a show. We don't know how to use any of the software, uh, you know, and which is all very, very obvious. Uh, my name, what's that? I can't. I can't wait till we get our first sponsor and we can like buy equipment and hire an engineer and you know, all the stuff. All those cool guys get to do. Yeah, right. I mean, we'll get a little studio, and we'll just like be, we'll we'll be like Joe Rogan. We'll have bows and arrows in there, and a flamethrower when Elon Musk comes and visits us uh, because Absolutely. he starts Burn his well. Tesla auction site. Uh, I'm yeah. sure that's going to happen, right? Yep, yep. And uh, it'll all be with crypto, right? <laughs> yeah. Why hasn't there been a uh, Tesla auction site, like a Tesla exclusive auction site? Like yeah. a P-car market, but uh, but like a Tesla exchange or something like that. I mean, there it is. Some yeah. some electric auction. Electric auction. Rochelle just walked in and just electric said that's auction. electric auction, man. Rochelle Powered by the, the electricity. Guru. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. All right. Well, maybe somebody in the uh, Bay Area and some tech areas just watched our show and was like, "Boom! The next billion dollar idea." Yep. Uh, and that's, you know, once again, don't take advice from, uh, the bid nerds. We don't know what we're talking oh, about. Boy, uh, let's be oh, look at poor Deeb. He's looking a little downtrodden today because we, uh, what we do on the show is we nerd out on all these cars. We pick a bunch of cars. We talk about them. We, we, you know, I don't know. What, how do you explain nerding out? What is nerding out? Nerding out is when we pick a car. And Michael will tell you about all the technical stuff, and then I'll just basically poop all over it or something yeah. uh, and say yeah. why I think it's a terrible car or a great car or whatever. And then we make predictions as to what we think they'll actually hammer for um, when the auction ends. Today, the cars that we review, the cars that we talk about are cars that will be closing within hours of our program, sometimes <laughs> even minutes. Uh, and so we make kind of these last-minute predictions. We we read the tea leaves. We smell the wind. Uh, we, uh, you know, no research. Or, yeah, it's, Is that I've, how you've been kicking my ass? I've been yeah, I'm breaking the wind over <laughs> here. I've got to, my producer, Tootie, over here. I'm going to send Tootie a can of mm. beans to ruin your ability to beat me in predicting car auctions. <laughs> I will mess up the wind in your house overnight. Watch that. As the host of the show, I do get the benefit of uh, second guess. Uh, yeah. You usually make the first prediction, and I just basically have to bet over or under, so it's well, pretty damn pretty, easy for me. You've gotten pretty good at it. Uh, let's see. What was our star car yesterday? It was the... Was it a Porsche? Was it um, the Bronco? Oh, the OJ Mobile. The OJ Mobile <laughs> yesterday, <laughs> yes. Look, look at this auction, JP. On Cars and Bids... Was this 1995 Ford Bronco that the, really the only reason we covered it was because it was white, right? So there's yeah. there's the OJ tie-in, and then we lamented that like you can't quantify it, and especially like one like this, um, you know, it's not like if you're not selling it ironically as the OJ car, then then it's just a worthless, tired-looking example of a Bronco with like 130,000 miles on it or something. Yeah. So I said 7,500 on cars and bids, and not in particularly nice shape. Um, and a few little modifications. You said 7,900. So this bid on cars and bids went all the way up to 11,300 
and didn't sell. <laughs> and so yeah. clearly the guy who owns this thing thinks he owns OJ's actual truck and was waiting for what exactly? 15, 20, 25? Like, buddy, like if you don't wash the car, you ain't going to get it. Like, come on, man. I mean, just leaving the uh, the dash toupee on there, just looking like crap. I mean, oh it was. God. I almost fell the off my chair steering, when I was watching it. The like, steering wheel cover it's on there is yeah. the one that got me. That the really leather's me. tired and stretched. I mean, yeah, I was sitting there watching it, going, "Yeah, maybe I could buy this for six or seven grand. You know, it'd be kind of fun, and we could do the whole, um, you know, OJ ironic thing." And uh, but just looking at the pictures, all the little details, the cracks in the dash, all just there's nothing good about this car. It was just junk we can fix it up yeah yeah make it nice i don't know if you yeah. could could you i mean it because it was brutal anyway when so you've got dashboard saying, issues and stuff it's pretty tough to fix that stuff well yeah i don't i don't know that we would take this particular one on yeah. it was a little too far gone for us i'd rather spend 10 or 12 on one that's a little bit nicer and then try yeah. to reach for 20 or 25 but this yeah. one i mean come on man this is this mm. joke and it went to 11 three and he didn't take the money i buddy you you're never gonna get that. You're never gonna get that again. Like, oh you're, man, you're yeah, he's gonna be lucky if he gets six or seven grand for it on on Craigslist yeah. or something like that. Um, it was yeah, you're right. It was a joke and it wasn't funny. It was just stupid. It was just flat. It's it just, just really bad. And, fa- and so again, yeah. nobody's policing Demiro's <clears throat> site, and, and we have you know encouraged him to consider this uh, uh, at all times and in all aspects, from photographs to actual cars. And then you got to police to some degree. You got to police the. Uh, what do you call it? The reserves. And so this yeah. guy said an unrealistic reserve. Um, it's astonishing that it made it up to 11.3. And it's even more astonishing that he didn't take the money. That's just just, just foolhardy all the way around. Uh, but anyway, you won that one just by being, uh, you know, uh, 400 closer. So there you go. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, but I, I really didn't think it was going to move at all. I mean, I thought it was no, going to no, be no, one no. of those things where it was like, all right, it's going to get maybe... One more bid if it's lucky, and then it went to the it moon. Was that and it didn't. Sixty one hundred or sixty three hundred, and uh, and then look at you know we bet both of us bet under eight grand, and it went way past that and didn't sell. Which is yeah. just you know heartbreaking. Neither right, one JP, of us on should head- deserve a, deserve a point no, on that one. It, yeah. it was just, well, I mean, it's just weird. It, it's a yeah. more it's a poor reflection on cars and bids. Yep. Um, Hemmings had a really cool car yesterday. The two thousand eight Porsche nine eleven S cabriolet with a six-speed manual uh, i love the colorway silver with the cocoa letter i know you wouldn't kick it out of bed for eating cookies but i like i really like this colorway mm-hmm. um and this by all counts is a nice car Fifteen thousand miles here in the bay area uh but jp this car was at fifty-seven thousand yesterday while we were looking at it still had a couple hours to go and I, where is this car going well i don't understand that's already all the money for an 11x with literally no receipts for an is bearing what what are we doing here people like this is crazy so i put another two grand or 1500 on top of my bid i said 59 but can't possibly pass 60 it's just an 11 s cab what the what am i missing here is there a kilo of cocaine in glove box what 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 makes the car so valuable you took the over and said 60 uh, and I think you were just reading the room there. The, the, like it had 24, 25 bids on it. There are a lot of people looking at this car on Hemmings Auto uh, Auctions. Well, our car sold for $61,425. And I want to congratulate the seller. I want to congratulate Hemmings. And congratulations to you because that is, without a doubt, all the money for that car. I guarantee you, God and Porsche couldn't sell that car for that money with a warranty. <laughs> like, I, it's just, they don't have the reach that Hemmings does. Uh, maybe because the bid nerds covered it, huh? Is that can we just go? With I'm that? sure that's what it was. It has to be. Well, has I mean, what be. else? Yeah. What other common denominator is there? It couldn't be the platform because yeah. the platform is crap. Yeah. Uh, the Terry car wasn't is on the show, right? I mean, if Terry were here <laughs> plugging it, maybe it would have gotten seventy. Um, yeah. I think people. <laughs> Just get caught up in low miles. I think there's just some people that are just so into that idea that, oh, it's a 13,000 mile car. Oh, it's worth all. It's just, I mean, how much is a brand new one? Um, 150. Yeah. So someone's going, oh, I can get a brand new Porsche for half that. Uh, and I'm getting a bargain, I guess. But it's, I mean, that's not low enough miles to be a collector car. And it's, uh, I mean, it's not high enough miles that it that had a bunch of the uh, problems that happened with Mark 1s uh, taken care of. So this car really seems, uh, where most people, I think, think this car is in a sweet spot. I think it's in a, I think it's the worst possible 
2008 Mark 1 997 you could get. I love the colorway. I agree with you. But I'd way rather have one that had 30 or 40,000 miles that had all the normal stuff taken care of. Because this car is going to have all that stuff go wrong with it in the next 10,000 miles. If you bring my budget up to sixty sixty five thousand dollars i'm thinking 996 turbo or maybe a higher mileage 996 gt3 you know like a sixty thousand mile car that might be 75 80 or something and i just spend yeah. a little bit more and yeah. i have myself i wouldn't get this. i wouldn't spend sixty five thousand dollars on a used non-ims bearing what you call it, M96 motor? I mean, yeah, no, I'd yeah. much rather have a Metzger if it cost me a little bit more money. Now I've got something that is going to be, and again, this is a really nice car and I loved it, but I would have loved this car for like, you know, 40 or yeah, something 000. like that. Yeah. Yeah, but not at, not at uh, 62,000. Well, that's another thing too. It's You're sitting crazy. here looking at it going, it's a cab. And I, you yeah. know, I love cabs. Ad. I'm a convertible yeah. guy. I love convertibles, but I am the first to admit they're not worth as much as coupes. They're just not. They just aren't. And ha- so, I mean, here's a 13,000 mile 2008 Mark One 997S. If it were a coupe, would it have brought 70? Are we just in a new world where, no, I mean, that doesn't just make get any used sense. to it? No. I mean, no, I don't I, think this car does really this on P car it. market. I don't think it does on BAT. Um, Hey man, was this car owned by someone famous? Did we not catch no, that? Nice, yeah. nice wheels, nice leather, low miles. But it's not a sixty-two thousand dollars car. Again, Maybe the God, God of the warranty couldn't get that. Yeah. I, again, there's no uh, CPO that old. But even if they slapped a drivetrain warranty on it from Chrysler Financial, they wouldn't get that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, it just doesn't make any sense. So Carmax, it, it, yeah, a, kind of an anomaly and and such a weird spot because again. We were thinking we we're gonna have Terry from Hemmings on the show. So let's like, what, what does Hemmings have that's interesting? Oh, they have a Porsche, which is not typical for them. They'll yeah. have 20 cars, 15 of them are domestic. And um, anyways, so uh, here they go. Were, they weren't you saying, this car. yeah, weren't you saying that Hemmings, I mean, cause Hemmings is one of those uh, brands that's been around the auction business since way before all this online stuff. Classified and they used to be, stuff. yeah, classifieds. And they used yeah. to have tons of Porsches. Right. They would always have 1,200 or 1,300 Porsches. And as the mainly bring a trailer, and then, of course, all the littler auction sites that are following suit are proliferating. This is where people are going with their interesting Porsches. And if you go on Hemmings today, there are less than 800 listings. And I'm telling you, JP, for years, there was always 1,200 or 1,300. If you saw 1,150, you're like, oh, wow, there's very many cars in the marketplace. But now it's less than 800 cars, and it's that. And I, I'd say that is absolutely a testament to the market share that BAT and its like you know uh, spinoffs are all mm. eating from Hemmings as the go-to place for classified. So if they don't figure out this auction thing and get their piece of the pie, they stand to become the the least relevant when they used to be the most relevant. It was like them. And then it was um, eBay for a while. But even while eBay was listing cars, those cars were still being double listed on, on Hemmings. But now BAT, somebody puts it up, they have to delist it, and then that car is sold. Like if you yeah. put it on Hem- um, BAT, <laughs> it, your car is going to sell. Like that's yeah. usually the case. So, yeah. anyways, weird. Weird, weird. weird. Yep. yep. Speaking of BAT, JP, and unusual listings, how about our 1986 Mercure XR4 <laughs> TI little road rally replica, almost like a little, you know, race car? Uh, what a bizarre list this thing is. Uh, terrible paint, terrible decals, um, aftermarket turbo and intercooler and some aftermarket wheels that got the Euro Cosworth wing. Uh, this car is almost cool, but it's not. And yet, even with a spare engine, we're thinking, wow, you know, eleven, twelve, thirteen thousand dollars is all the money for this car. Uh, but I'll go ahead and say it looks like it's going somewhere. I'll go 18, you go 18, five and bang over. This car sold for $26,750. These two guys fought over it. We should have jumped back on and watched the close of that, which you had predicted yesterday that we should have watched that car close. Oh, man, if I didn't have to go uh, down to the restaurant, I would have absolutely loved to watch the close of that auction because I would have been laughing the entire time. Anyways, congratulations to the seller. You got all the money. Uh, and to the owner, I hope you clean up the cosmetics on that, make it look cool, because there might be a neat car under there. I just can't tell. Mm. Yeah, no comment. Yeah, you, no, I was just letting you go. Yeah, it, 
<laughs> Bradley Brownell from Rad for Sale pointed out when he was on the show last is like if you have the two if you you, you only need two you need yeah. to find two people and that's the thing that B A T does regularly you don't need a huge audience you just need two guys that want it and uh, B A T found those two guys yesterday and they duked it out and it was a bloodbath uh, and yeah. uh, you know that's nobody I, I just don't see anybody winning in that situation other than no. the uh, than the seller the seller's like. Uh, well, this is awesome. Uh, we've got a genocide, but I'll take the profits. Let's do it. I mean, people were slayed, and there was blood in the streets. That was an ugly auction. Let me put it to you this way. With $26,750 in his pocket, he can go out and buy five more core XR 40 eyes <laughs> If he can find them. If yeah, he could. Left. He could yeah. get a big field and have all his buddies get together and they could play Mericor XR4TI soccer. They could just get a big, huge <laughs> soccer ball and just have the cars bouncing yeah, around like they did in top gear. Yeah, um, so uh, Cousin Mark says the audio is fine. What's up, Mark? Good morning, buddy. Hey, Mark. How you doing, buddy? Uh, um, so thank you. So I think we're good. I just, you, you sound, my, maybe my headphones are broken. I don't know, whatever. Mm. Uh, look, here we go, JP. Here's an interesting one. The 1996 Corvette uh, mm. something edition. What was it called? The collector's edition. Because remember, it was so rare. It was one of 4,032 or something weird number. Spit take. Uh, the one <laughs> redeeming, actually two mm. redeeming qualities to this car. One, it had the upgraded motor. It had the LT4, which is the good for 300. 30 horsepower and like 340 pound foot of torque so by by all accounts that's a beast it is a six-speed manual and this car was really clean it had i don't know in the teens of thousands of miles but there was you know you look at the photos which were okay and you couldn't really find flaw or fault with this car it's been it's been looked after so i said twenty five thousand. you said i'll take the over at 26 um, I was moving my bid in the morning because it had gained ground overnight. And I said, 25, 26. So I go 25. You go, I'll take your bid at 26. Well, you took the right bid because you got a Yahtzee, son. There you go. $26,000 Yahtzee for JP on a day when he won them all. He even got a Yahtzee to stomp my head into the ground. And our final car, JP, this one broke my heart. The 1976 Porsche Turbo Corrector, Turbo Carrera. When I speak on on is as much as you can count on cars bids not having a late three when it comes to porsches on bring a trailer you can almost count on them having a really strong late fury uh our car was like forty fifty thousand dollars yesterday so i spent 80 grand and you said no way like ninety thousand dollars our car sold for one hundred and seven thousand dollars meaning it made 55 60 grand in the closing hours or the closing hour of the auction, I we probably should have covered that one because it's by all accounts the bids just went on and on and on. Anyway, really neat car. Uh, has some patina, had some cosmetic flaws, but all of that could be rectified. And what you'd be left with is a 60,000 mile original uh, silver with red leather turbo Carrera, which is a collectible car. And this one is in absolute driving condition. I would have swapped a Ruby out, but it turns out it would have cost me 30 grand and Ruby to get this car. So congratulations to everybody involved. That's, a, that's still a really neat car for the money. This is the only one I consider you really getting wrong yesterday because the, yesterday's, yesterday's uh, predictions were all pretty much what you and I bet kind of the same numbers and i just happened to fall one way or the other uh in my favor uh but this one was the one that was like what are you talking about i mean how can you be i, I was just like i was shocked that you were so soft on this car uh because this thing really is wonderful and it is that iconic car and you agreed with all those things so was there something about the early 930s that you think are soft in the market and now that's changing or what what is your no, opinion just, there no. 30s in general have been really soft yeah. uh, and we're not seeing a lot of them because most of the people that have them think they're worth a lot more than they are and I think they mm -hmm. realize that they're not bringing the money um, you know I listen we bought a 27,000 mile example for Godden uh, and you know we're struggling to get $150,000 for that car and that car has an incredible provenance and, uh, and and super low miles really mm -hmm. uh, and it's it's like this it's a turbo Carrera it's a 77 um, so, you know, here's this car and it's got, you know, twice as many miles and, and, you know, a lot of 
it, it, it didn't look like it was looked after with those dings in the body panels and stuff like that. It kind of turned me off and, and it was sitting at 40 something thousand dollars. So I was really yeah. just betting the action, not the platform or the car. And I absolutely guessed wrong. It's, I was like, it just doesn't look like this car is going anywhere. Mm. I don't think people are appreciating it. And it's because cosmetically, the pictures did a good job of showing the true condition of the car. Uh, to you and me, those things wouldn't scare us. Mm. But the action on it up to the day of the close looked like it was scaring people. And so I just mm. guessed wrong, but whatever. No well, yeah, I mean, I think it's like any, pretty much any data that you can glean from your time uh, at, at our friends at God and Porsche of Las Vegas. Look. I mean, that was, that may as well have been in another century because everything has changed since then. Oh, and, yeah, know. you know, and I think you're right that nine thirties have been a bit soft and, and you just said something that I think is really interesting, uh, or at least very poignant is that we haven't seen any, like yeah. in, in the right. time we've been doing the show for about half the year. Uh, and yeah. we haven't seen nine thirties like at all because i think everyone just accepted that well they're soft and then you started seeing the m491 cars pop up all over the place and those are all bringing big money and multiple every time we talked about one of those we're going god that's as much as a turbo would be and yep. we sit there and go yeah 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 that's true without ever having without seeing any turbos hit the market to yeah, compare yeah, nope. We have no turbo comps to compare them to. They're right. No recent. Current. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. anything from six months ago is just completely irrelevant. I mean, it really right. is. Even three months ago, is like, mm, things are different right now. Uh, so, yeah, I think 930s are going to start coming out of the woodwork. It, and they're going to go up. This. Hear me out on this. Like, in, in, you know, 14, 15, and 16, we had the height of the, of the collector market. And yeah. 930s, good ones, were bringing $150,000. Yeah. And so those big numbers brought all of the crappy ones out of the garages and out of storage and mm -hmm. and in 17 18 and 19 while well, i was a god i can't tell you how many times i was offered a 930 turbo and i would have to you know go and book the car and when i would hit it these guys would just be crushed thinking they had like you know they thought it was like found money like like yeah. antique roadshow that napoleon yeah. owned it or something and it's <laughs> like no man your car's worth 65 grand look Oh, I was gonna. My mechanic told me this is 150 grand. I'm like, your mechanic isn't in the car business; he's in the repair business. Like, yeah. you, I mean, like, I'm sorry, but that's what it's worth. I can't, I sent so many dejected, uh, you know, ARA, AR, ARP, ARP, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just walking out to their car like, like I just told them their dog had cancer. I mean, it was just yeah. the worst. It was awful, and and we turned away, you know, decent cars that we could have, you know, cleaned up a little bit and turned around and made, but they everybody had a false read on what their car was worth. Mm. Um, and so now what I think is that the cars have all been sequestered again. And until Turbo start bringing, you know, big money, um, th you're not going to see it. Again, a few years ago, this would have been a $140,000 car. Now it's a hundred. It's not even $110,000. Um, yeah. So it's it's a decent value to me. And this is the most collectible you want. The, you know, and like an original paint, a first paint Turbo Carrera. Uh, it's, a, it's a great car. But I literally just, I, I read the tea leaves wrong on this one. So I, I feel like this car, I, I think that, yeah, well, no, I think it's, it's an yeah. interesting part of the segment because we obviously lean towards Porsches a lot. I mean, just about every episode has at least one Porsche. Every, if we're going to pick the most interesting cars of the day, at least yeah. one of them is a Porsche. Uh, <laughs> and and that was I admit my bias. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we admit our bias to the audience there. We like Porsches. We're Porsche nerds when it really comes down to it. All the other cars are great too, but Porsches yeah. are really our thing. Um, yeah. Go check out Durfas Nation if you don't believe us. Um, yeah. You know, look, the, I, I think that if this card brought, what, 110? What was it? 107. 107. So, I mean, all the things that you were pointing out, the dings, the scratches, the driver quality of this car, I think mean yeah. that, all right, this thing brings a buck 10. I think a super clean one, like the one you guys had at God and God, I think they still have it. Um, they do. You know, that car is probably a buck 30, right? I mean, because that yeah. one is immaculate. No dings, yeah. no scratches, no, not a driver quality. We're talking as pretty as they come and perfect as they yeah. come uh it's i really think nice. i think yeah. now's it's, the time for them to take a look at that older inventory and say hey maybe we should try these auctions but well you know, you know i mean they've got a, a classic manager and it, it'll be mm -hmm. his job to be the white knight and pull mm -hmm. the band-aid off when the opportunity you know pre presents itself yeah but you know um 
this is the this is the conundrum with with uh, inventorying classic cars. Yeah. The market's changed, and and now some of the values of these cars are beached. And, and God is not the only one to suffer from this phenomenon. Uh, yeah. But there are a handful of cars there that are misvalued with regards to what they own them for. Yeah. Um, even that car that that I bought along with with you know the owner of the company, he right. he picked it out and we bid on it online. And uh, boy, the GM was not thrilled about that. And then, of course, we <laughs> did get it sold right away. Yeah. And now the values have just receded and receded, and that car is kind of stuck. Yeah. So, um, anyways, we'll see what happens or what they decide to do. But in the meantime, this is uh, I, I look when you when you stand back and look at this car and and, and grade it on the merit of the selling price, uh, that's a fair value for a good car. That when the market comes back, will could be a strong car because it'd be very easy to clean this car up. Uh, and it just have a few miles on it, and you've got a great driving, appreciating asset as the market turns around. But we are in, uh, you know, this is weird times. I mean, we're still yeah. in a pandemic, yeah. you know, for God's sake. <laughs> so anyway, that's a Shout out to our friends at uh, God and Porsche of Las Vegas. Uh, Jay and Mikey are hey, probably Mike, listening to us yeah. right now. How's it going, fellas? Mikey, Mikey hashtags. <laughs> oh snap all right uh well let's get so that you know we spent a lot of time on that car and thanks for uh you know walking down that uh that trail with us guys because i think 930s really are an important car in the overall landscape of collector cars yeah. i mean it is the most iconic car pretty much of all time uh so it'll be interesting to watch those let's get to the cars today that was yesterday's we spent a lot of time on uh yesterday's cars and our predictions from yesterday let's give michael deeb a chance to catch up uh you need Man, to sweep I the next couple of days let's get some yahtzees for michael deeb Rug out. I hope I pull the rug out from underneath you. I'm gonna, you know, here's the thing. I'm gonna go I'm ham on you today, brother. I'm gonna just be like, all right. Usually, I play it close to the vest to win. It's like, because for so long when we started this thing, you know, I, I would like, uh, all right, he's gonna give his bid. I'm gonna give my my actual number, what I think it's gonna be. And then I started to realize I was getting my butt kicked, so I just started playing really tight and just going, all right, I'll just go yeah, a little over, over a under. little under. Uh, and that seems to work pretty good. Uh, but Absolutely. now I'm, but now I'm going back to just. Ah, all right, let's bring the machine gun out and see what we can hit. And you know I'm going to just yeah. whoop you now because uh, gloves are off. Yeah. Let's do it. Mark, uh, Mark always screams for blind bids. We'll have, we'll have to figure that. We'll get in studio together. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think, I think actually, let's, maybe even before a studio, we're gonna we're gonna do uh, the little <laughs> the. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to that car. future show. The big car of the day today. Uh, what car is today? Today it's the Datsun. Uh, oh, the, the Chachi Ramirez special. <laughs> that right, is Chachi, correct. This is for you. Uh, I hope you're still watching the show. He might have tuned us out. I don't know. He's got a kid. He's, he's busy. But uh, he's restoring. <laughs> he's got a life. Uh, yeah. So this one's in Carlsbad, California, and Chachi lives near. Uh, I don't know where he lives. Um, I'll think of it down the, the down the road, but um, like near Ojai and all that stuff down in the wine country. Oh, nice. Uh, but this is a 1978 Datsun 280Z with 77,000 miles and this one is done check it out this is like a little resto mod um you know they kind of went through the drive chain and rebuilt the motor and the gearbox uh it's got some aftermarket wheels and that front lip spoiler it's painted um they call it nissan orange i think i mean this is just a really cool car on p car market it does have like 77,000 miles on it it is strangely on p car market um but down here in southern california that's i mean that, that car will get you anywhere i mean it is head turning it's fun to drive I, I i like everything about this car and and our good friend literally one of the most loyal bid nerds that there possibly is chachi ramirez is building one uh and i would i wanted to pick this car because i thought it'd be fun to look at a california car and a non-Japanese car on P car market to see if anything has changed. And also f to draw some inspiration because when Chachi gets his car running, uh, every time you and I go to Southern California for a Porsche event, he's driving down to meet us. So Breakfast Club, Professor Runs, you, we're going to see Chachi's uh, Datsun in the very near future, JP. So uh, here's this car on offer with coilovers and ceramic headers and an aluminum radiator. I mean, this guy spent some money and some hours to make a nice car, and now he's letting it go. And John... What do you always preach? That the guy that spent the money doing the restoration is going to lose money. But the guy who buys this from him is going to get a tremendous value. And, and what better value could there be than to have it served up on P-Car Market where, I mean, unless this thing was dressed as a Ferrari, JP, it's not going to bring 50 grand, right? <laughs> 
You know, I mean, this is going to be a really interesting test for our friends at P-Car Market. Uh, this guy selling this beautiful car, this beautiful Datsun, uh, he is taking a risk, man. I am oh, shocked that he would uh, throw this up here because this car, whatever it brings, it would bring more on BAT. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. So Absolutely. he has already agreed to leave money on the table. The question is, how much? You know, what will be the, uh, the delta of between what he would sell it for here and what he'll sell it for over there. We'll never know. And, uh, you know, so often, I mean, look, we were talking about some of the cars from yesterday uh, that were on cars and bids, and we have a couple of cars on cars and bids today, too, that I was going to just, it's like, Cars and Bids is a platform that, you know, Doug DeMiro is running around out there online with his wrap-up show for the week. He's always talking about how great they did this week and how these amazing auctions are happening. I just sit there and go, yeah, those cars brought money. Uh, they brought big money, but they would have brought more on the other platforms. Um, and, you know, they're sitting there patting themselves on the back, not realizing that they have a problem. So P-Car Market here, you know, I commend them for this. I mean, I don't blame them for getting cars like this and, and trying yeah. to, to expand. Absolutely. And, and uh, the, if they get decent money for this car they're going to pat themselves on the back and say hey look how good we did and the answer is yeah you did do well but the seller is the one that's taking the risk and the seller is the one that's leaving money on the table i do not see any realm any possibility any world where this car brings more money on b car market over bat that just it just even if this car brings more money than one of these has ever brought it would have brought even more money than one of these has ever brought over there yeah. uh and so, uh, uh a perfectly restored uh, 280Z now is a thirty forty thousand dollar car. Forty grand yeah. is like maximum money for the 280s. Now 240s are bringing crazy money, especially after that Franklin Mint car on BAT brought three hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So a resto mod is probably not going to bring quite that same money, but I would venture a guess that this car would be really close to thirty thousand dollars on BAT maybe a tiny bit more if somebody really fell in love with it or two guys fought over it, which is, you know, can sometimes be the case. But here at uh, P car market where, you know, you and I have <laughs> often suspected that they have uh, a natural East coast bias where they bring more money for cars that are in their own backyard than they do for cars out in California. And of mm -hmm. course P car market is, is supposed to refer to Porsche. So when you see something Japanese, it's not typically their forte. So our car with three hours to go, uh, in Carlsbad, California, is sitting at just seven thousand dollars. So the big question is: Is it going to be twenty? And if it does, will it break twenty-five? And I, I think that would be the you know the most relevant high water mark for this car on this platform. And I thought that's why we should bring it up. That and the Chachi, who lives near uh, San Luis Obispo, they're in a little town uh, called uh, I think Nipmo uh, down there in Southern California. Hi, Mary. Good morning. Um, and Isla, his baby. Uh, that's everybody in the family, so I did my shout-outs. But there you go. I think this car is cool. Look at that steering wheel, JP, that Momo, that dished Momo steering wheel that kind of looks like a prototypo. I forget the name of that model, but with the Alcantara, that's an $800 steering wheel on that car. I mean, yeah. you know, it, there's some cool stuff in a lot to like here. I, I like this build a lot. So what do you think? Do you think yeah, right down to the triple eights. Uh, and, uh, you know, his video is very concise. This is great. Uh, he's going through all the different stuff, um, going through. I mean, there's a romanticism here. Uh, I, I did want to see. Yeah, this is the angle I want to see more of. I want to be in the driver's cockpit uh, while he's kind of rowing through the gears. Um, I don't don't love that he's leaving his hand on the gear shift. All right, he's he's all right. He's okay. Yeah. Uh, this looks like a lot of fun. I love this car. I mean, this is the I type of car it's, that it's um, this is absolutely an alternative to an air cooled 911 uh, that it would ex be acceptable in any Porsche. Any there's no group of Porsche guys that I know that I hang out with that would that would turn their nose up if this car rolled up uh, at a meet where we were all. We, in fact, quite the opposite. We'd all be like, "Oh my god, that thing is dope." Um, this, so especially, yeah, especially when the has this much attention to detail. What the Porsche yeah. guys appreciate. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, cool car, JP. Got 16 bids, under three hours to go, sitting at 17.5. So where do you think? I Last night it was at 15. I thought it might make to 20. Since it's at 17.5, I'm going to up my bid, and I'm going to say that, you know, that the car has the appeal that maybe rises above the bias of the platform. Mm. I'm going to go 
maybe sticking my neck out a little too far, but I'm going to say $24,000. Wow. Okay. Um, yeah, I was going to go right there at 25. So that's not me playing close uh, to yeah, you. Yeah. That's actually yeah. where I think it was going to go. Um, yeah. There could be some sky above this thing. I mean, absolutely it should be. It, there yeah, should be. If it were BAT, it yeah. If it were BAT, I'd be get, I'd be betting in the 30s. I mean, I just would. Sure. Um, yeah. You know, and the funny thing is, is if this gets there at 25, it gets any higher than that. I mean, that's as much as my 996 GT3 clone almost uh, got. Right. On peak our yeah. market, so it'd be funny if a Datsun does better than a than a nine nine six, uh, a perfect nine nine six. So, anyways, this car is yeah. beautiful. Uh, good luck to the seller. You're taking you're rolling the dice here, bro. Uh, right. You know, yeah. good luck, it's man. Like, it's like playing <laughs> Russian roulette, right? You know, uh, the only the only thing about peak our market is you know, I mean, they're really aggressive in getting the cars online, and you know, oh, they'll get you on immediately. Unlike you know, BAT, where you got to wait a month and a half. Yeah, you submit and then they email you back with a link to your listing. <laughs> yeah, they they call you. They got five guys calling you from from Long Island, going, "Hey, you want to sell your car? Yeah, we like we usually like the Porsches, but we'll sell you Datsun. Uh, yeah, yeah, we like yeah. the Datsun. We we like the Datsun. Datsun. That's a yeah. sweet rogue, yo. This is this is the uh, first gen Juke. I yeah. believe is what that is. Um, all right. All right. Wow. All right. Well, we'll see how you guys do, P-Car Market. Uh, you know, let's go check it. Boy, we're all over the platforms today. Uh, yeah. What What's the next car that we've got over here? Let's go to bring a trailer for the 2008 Porsche. We're just going to basically okay. drive up the coast to Fremont, California, which all is right. in the Bay Area. This is actually not far from Mark City now. Uh, and Bring a Trailer has the 2000 Porsche 911 Carrera S with a six speed manual. So 32,000 miles. Hey, Michael, car. what year was this one again? 2008. This is a 2008, like the uh, like the convertible that we looked at on Hemming yesterday. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> and now this has twice as many miles at 32, where our car yesterday had like 15 or 16. Mm -hmm. uh, but equally clean, lobster claws, uh, an attractive color. I love this uh, it's sort of like the meteor gray color. I mm -hmm. think that's the color of Esther's Cayenne. Um, and it's an S, and it's it's very nice car. I mean, what, there's a lot to like here. I mean, this is just a no-nonsense, great value for the money. And it's sitting at $43,500 with about two and a half hours to go. Uh, on a you know very normal 17 bids that's like average action for a car a uh, decent bucket of photos uh seems to be pretty honest uh not a lot going on here the two owner car i mean there's there, what more could you want and and again the the price reflects the value of the car i don't think this car is going to bring sixty thousand dollars like by any stretch you know and even if you say well it's got fifteen thousand more miles it's i don't think it's going to bring fifty five thousand dollars either i you know so what am I missing? Again, this I thought this would be an interesting juxtaposition to the car from yesterday. So what do you say, JP? Um, where is it sitting at right now? It's at 43500 <clears throat> with two okay. and a half hours to go. I mean, this is a, the to. only option that this car doesn't have other than aero uh, would be the, the sport seats. But it has chrono and yeah. the sport suspension, you know, the PASM, all yeah. that kind of stuff. So this is this is a fantastic car. This is absolutely yeah. the best of the dot .1, uh, you know, S997s. Uh, you know, obviously yeah. a GT3 would be better. But, I mean, if you're just going to get a run of the – call it run run of the mill if there is any such thing uh 997s this is it this is kind of blue chip gold standard here you go this is the car you yeah. want if you're going to get a 997.1 um boy you know with that with that result yesterday and what i've been seeing just looking at porsches in general in the market um i think this thing does have some sky uh because it, wow. a, a lot of people um even though they it's it's weird with the 2008s it feels like people put the blinders on when it comes to the ims <laughs> thing it's still a uh, m96 engine and a lot of people right. seem to think that the m96 engines were only in the o5 or 06 997s they don't realize the cutoff was at 08 um and you know there aren't a lot of 08s 08s or 08s and 09s are very rare cars because you know it was the it, the the crash happened back then and porsche really restricted their numbers uh so this is a car that's I'm, it's certainly not collectible with this kind of miles, but it is not a super common car. There's tons of 05, 6, and 7s, but 8s, eh, they're few and far between. Uh, this oh, one, yeah. we'll, hyper clean. We'll see that. 
we'll see that down the road when we look back on the pandemic and see that 20 and 21 production is really yeah. low. Yeah. Uh, and there are very few cars out there. JP, question for you. <clears throat> Help me out here. Uh, I, I, there's some gray areas in my portion knowledge. Did dot two for nine nine seven start in two thousand nine or two thousand ten? Nine, nine. So yeah. the two thousand nine nine eleven S is a dot two. Correct. A okay. two thousand nine of any nine eleven is a dot two. So uh, okay. so okay. even if it's a base. Um, yeah. So I have a not, I have a dot two. Yeah. An 09. Okay. Um So where do you think this car is going to land? Well, so again, here we go. Uh, looking at the car, I, I said. 48 but i'm gonna i i, I sometimes misread you at 43.5 that's only five thousand dollars more it's got two and a half hours to go <clears throat> 17 bids and it's a really nice car it's an attractive car so the question is is it going to break 50 grand and you know the, the the thinking after yesterday's result is that it should so i'm just going to park my bid right at 50 grand all right, I'm gonna go crazy. Like I said, I'm going for yep. broke because I've got some, uh, I've got some, uh, some yeah, distance between us. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm going sixty, man. This thing's going. Wow. This is gonna break sixty. Oh, my God, that's, you that's cannot find an a, a dot two S. They yep. are a dot two S coupe yep. with a manual is unobtainium. They do not exist on the market. Look, wow. look on on bring a trailer look on uh auto trader look on car gurus look the, you will not find one on any platform in any place across the country and if you do come across one it's going to be 75 80 thousand dollars for for a manual s coupe right they, they there's pdks all over the place pdks pop up and even those are fairly rare but pdks pop up and people are wanting all the money for those too yeah. uh but a uh so this is this being an 08 being the, the probably the most reliable of the dot two or dot ones um i i think i think uh you know the rising tides will tide will raise all raise ships all this ships. is definitely a 60 60 000 car all right well we'll see if you're crazy or if i'm uninformed well i'm certainly crazy and uh, so, you're also uninformed, uninformed but that doesn't mean either one of us uh will uh, will win this so uh Right. No, no, uh, no telling there. Again, don't listen to us. We don't know what we're talking about. But what we do, the only advice we, we want you to take is to hit the subscribe button and the like button and the notification yeah. button. Do it. Do it. Hit the button. Do uh, it. <clears throat> JP, cars and bids. Doug DeMiro found a real uh, unicorn. Mm. Uh, this is a 1994 MG RV8 uh, factory V8 power plant. Under 2000 were built. They have a five-speed manual, and this one's on a U.S. title. Note, it is right-hand drive. <clears throat> These cars were never brought to the United States. Uh, and our car has just 27,000 miles on it and about two hours to go. Um, basically, MG kind of created, they took the old platform from the 60s and 70s uh, and then basically just rethought it. So uh, it was like 15% of this car is, is like from the original car. Uh, and the other 85% was built to make this. And then they built these for like two or three years and did well enough to create a whole new version of the car called the MGF. But this is that little sort of stopgap unicorn car that they built to see if people would go for essentially a retro design, but with modern running gear and equipment. And that's what we're looking at here. Now, the owner of this car out of Christian's Berg, Virginia has a laundry list of modifications to make this car drive better because believe it or not, JP, even with a V8, a 3.9 liter V8, this car stock only makes 190 horsepower and 235 pound foot of torque. I think that's the 3.9 liter V8 that's in your disco. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, it is. I, I think it's the Land Rover disco uh, V8. Um, but this guy put 17 inch wheels on it. He did the shocks. He did the brakes. Um, he did uh, brake balance, adjustable brake balance, exhaust, fan shroud, uh, hood vents emblems the steering wheel and the list goes on and on there's probably more than a couple dozen mods to make this car even cooler but that's that color that that electric you know sort of moss metallic green color is um is factory that's uh, beckett's green and beckett's is the name of a corner at silverstone racetrack on a formula one track in england how's that for bid nerd knowledge? there's some nerd uh, knowledge yeah that is beckett's green uh which this guy didn't even write they didn't even write that it's beckett's green but that's beckett's green because I apparently know a lot about MGs after researching this car. Uh, but I think the mods will make it a better driver. The question is, do they add to the value? 
Uh, John, with 25,000 miles on a 94 MG RV8 or whatever, uh, this should be about a $35,000 car, maybe 40 if they find the right buyer. But this car being on cars and bids and this car with all the mods, uh, you know, is it even going to touch 20 or 25? That's the question. So I hand it over to you. Do you like MG's attempt at a contemporary version like a, you know the way the mustang today looks like a fastback from the 60s mm. mg was trying to do that here yay or nay you know uh, well not. i'm curious where you got that where you got that figure you say that this car should be this number or that number because shit, i haven't seen one of these for sale since they were new i mean and i, I don't think there this are, car huh there are a couple there are a couple of comps for sale currently in the u.s uh okay. terry from hemmings would know what i'm talking about yeah there's one, there's one on his site right now uh, with a few less miles, uh, like thirty-eight thousand dollars. Uh, I think this car is less like a like a like a new Mustang where they've kind of made it retro, look retro, like it's an old one. This is more like MG's nine six four. This is like you know the nine yeah, eleven right. just kind of kept going and going and going. And then they're like, oh, we got new stuff coming. Yeah, let's get rid of the old bumpers. Let's make them a little you know smooth out the edges. Put some modern stuff in there. Put a you know bump up the engine and everything. That's really what this is. I mean, it's the same that, era. The 964 analogy is a great take, JP. You're right on the money with that one. You know, and, uh, well, thank you. And then, you know, because after that, then they came out the 993, which really was a redesign, and whatever, you know, MG did after that. This this car, they I did. remember the seeing MGF. these. Yeah, the MGF. The MGF, the silhouette is is similar. Like, it's mm -hmm. recognizable as an MG, mm -hmm. yet it, none of the panels are, are carryover. So, yeah. your, your again, your analogy uh, uh, still holds water. This, uh, I, I love the way these look. I have never driven one. Um, I don't want one because it's right-hand drive, but boy, if they made a left-hand drive one, uh, yeah. that would definitely be a car I'd be interested in because I, I remember when they were brand new going, man, I really like that a lot and, and, yeah. and never liking them uh, growing, you know, because people had them growing up in high school. This is a car that a lot of kids had and, you know, tried to push it to, to school because, you know, just, you just needed a bus pass to go along with this car because you really weren't very likely to make it work you needed to get driving the old ones <laughs> yeah they were really junk um so but this car gosh darn beautiful uh would love to drive one and see what it's like wrong uh, platform wrong yeah wrong but this platform. is not in the right place for it i don't see oh, this doing right. anything uh yeah. so yeah where do you think it's gonna land so my guess is jp this guy's hiding it behind a uh you know a he got to dictate the reserve and that's why it's here yeah um, whereas he probably submitted it to bat and they gave him you know uh, a realistic $30, reserve, $30, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, no way, this is a thirty thousand dollar car. Or whatever yeah. He's thinking. So, uh, you know, where do I think it's land, and where do I think it's going to sell? Are also two different questions. I, mm. I really don't know a lot about these, but like I said, there's another one in the marketplace right now for less than forty grand. Um, I put twenty five thousand dollars. I, you know, but we're real. I, it, I'm throwing darts in the dark. So, yeah. Uh, you know. You're saying twenty five? Where's it at I'll now? Just stick with it. It's at seventeen five, I think. Oh man, yeah. It's I at 18. think it's at eighteen. It's Sorry. at eighteen. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna. Boy, I I want to bet the over, but that I just yeah, didn't. I, that's I'd just dumb on this platform. It's just. Yeah, yeah I'm going twenty. I mean, it's yeah. it's a right hand drive car. It's weird. It's obscure. It, that's that sounds like Doug DeMiro might buy it, but it doesn't sound like anyone that that pays attention to his platform would. I mean, this. Yeah. Yeah, boy, that's just a weird car. Weird, weird. Car. Where is this car? Uh, Christiansburg, Virginia. Virginia. Okay, so it's an East Coast car. All right. Well, good luck to the seller, and uh, good luck to Doug Demuro on that one. I don't think that's going right, to launch. I picked this car simply to compare it to the car I just looked at, and it's not really fair, apples to apples. But I mean, mm -hmm. again, it's like a two seat roadster with a stick, uh, and it. it Kind of has the romanticism of a bygone era, and that's the Long Hood Z4 from 2009. Also on cars bids, also on the East Coast. This is from Sicklerville, New Jersey. Our BMW Z4 is an S Drive 35i with a six speed manual transmission, which is not a common configuration. Most of the guys that upgraded to the 35 got their DCT or whatever it was called. Um, this car does have 80, almost 84,000 miles on it, but the three liter turbocharged inline six makes 300 horsepower and it's got a stick. That's all you need to know. Uh, and it's a BMW, so you can find parts for it and all this other stuff. And yet the values of these aren't particularly strong either. Um, our car has uh, over two hours to go on the East Coast. It's sitting at just $13,000, uh, yet on a strong 21 bids. Uh, a few mods to note, um, those wheels are called 
<clears throat> they're staggered width front to rear and they're 18 inch staggered wrap alloy wheels um and then a few little cosmetic things they did side marker lights and stuff you know things the porsche guys do um no flaws uh the, uh oh, sorry there was an accident involving uh with minor damage to the rear of the car in may of 2018 that's on the carfax you, you have to wonder if that's holding it back some uh, you know, by all accounts, you would think this would be a twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars car, but this one just looked like it could be twenty. So, is it possible that you could have a superior BMW for less money than that little uh, RV? That was what I thought would be interesting to look at. So, I send it back to you. Uh, blue cream probably isn't our colorway, but but uh, these I, I would love to drive this car. It's a good looking car. Yeah, these are really fun to drive. I absolutely love the early ones the the first gen z4s are my jam uh and yeah. you know i know that's uh Especially controversial an version, right? yeah an m version was yeah. just a wonderful car these things with the uh with the little uh three liter tur or th what is it th whatever the three yeah. liter turbo thing um you know they j they just absolutely rip they're super fast cars um and uh you know yeah you're you're absolutely right with the manual transmission uh you're just gonna murder it out there sorry guys having a little bit of a technical issue sorry hang tight with me here um yeah i just can't get over the looks they're just ugly they're just straight there's no way around it there's there's no there's nothing tough about this car this is a very feminine car and and that doesn't mean it's a bad car that doesn't it's just i, I don't see any guy uh that wants to drive a sports car saying yeah i choose a z4 uh especially with these <laughs> just hideous wheels these wheels look like they came from the the auto parts store the tire store down the they, street they are they're a just the wrong wheels yeah those are just and they're probably he i mean that's just ugh. uh the stock wheels would have been so much better i love the fact that it's a convertible i love the fact that it's a six speed this car is going to drive wonderfully uh they were way overpriced in the first when they were new i mean 70 something yeah. thousand dollars do you for these like the too retractable much. hard top as a as i don't i don't i don't old school yeah you yeah like the, right yeah, I just S why S make S things so like four seconds. Just yeah, you know? why make it so overly complicated uh, with the hard top thing? I think that's just like that's pandering to the people that say, "Oh, coupes are better." The okay, well, counters, right? yeah, it's like yeah. I don't know. Is it? I mean, is it the bean counters? Because it's got to be cheaper to put a a rag top on it than these big expensive right, but and overly engineered like hard top. But you're like going for mass appeal. There's no purist yeah, in this, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, everybody wants the best of both worlds. Well, then figure out a way to give it to them. And, yeah. and that's, and I this feel like the bean counters are, it. Yeah. are acquiescing to the, you know, the, what do they call it? focus groups you know yeah i mean uh you know if this car does come in under 25 it is a lot of car for 25 grand uh you know they were overpriced to begin with and now i think they're uh, probably a value if you aren't embarrassed to drive one i mean this is just to me uh you may as well drive a miata i mean it's just not there's nothing <laughs> cool about this nobody thinks this car is cool uh even if you go to like bmw meets uh and hang out with all yeah. the bmw enthusiasts nobody likes them there either you know, they're all the all the guys that have really cool BMWs, right. either classic ones or modern ones or M's or whatever. Their wives drive these, and I and I don't mean that to disparage the wives. I mean lucky wives, but people that just don't care about performance cars. It's really odd that this one has a six speed, uh, because this probably yeah. is absurdly fun to drive. Maybe if it were black or silver or some kind of gnarly color right. and had wheels that weren't right. shuck specials, uh, you'd have something here. But I don't think you do. It yeah, would what's your even look better? It would probably even look better in Beckett's green. <laughs> there you go. Where's it going to land? So JP, I don't think this car is even going to break twenty grand on this yeah. platform with a bad Carfax and ninety thousand miles. So I say eighteen thousand bucks. Yeah, and where's it at now? It's at uh, thirteen one. It was at twelve seven overnight. So it got a couple of bids in the morning, but not real like not real money. Fifteen failed to sell. I don't think this thing's moving. Oh wow! There you go. Um, and if it does, if if, if this thing. Man, if you're selling this thing, take anything you can get. Nobody's buying. I mean, it is spring. Uh, somebody might be looking for a car for their girlfriend or boyfriend. There you go. Yeah, whatever. All right. Uh, yeah. Last car of the day. All, back to Hemmings. Terry, if you're watching, this one's for you. Oh, yeah, Terry. He wants Look to talk about this. all the cars they have. Well, here's one that you guys have. We'll make the whole here's show. The We're going to rename the show Hemmings Nerds. Yeah, Hemmings Nerds. Look at this thing. JP, this came from the Dodge dealership. Are, <laughs> do you remember these cars? Yeah. How Radwood royalty would you be if you rolled up to the next Radwood in a 1989 Dodge Dakota Sport convertible 
that came from the factory. This thing is so cool. It's so hideous. I love it. It's just absolutely. I, I it makes me want to like laugh and throw up at the same time. Uh, our car has just fifty thousand two hundred thirty-two miles, uh, and is offered to us out of Fredericton, Washington. But JP, th the photos are bad. But if you really peer in and look at your computer screen, this car is like mint condition. It's absolutely stunning condition. And, uh, and, and I just don't remember the last time you see something like this. So this is a, a really unbold uh, car. They did build and sell 2,800 of these in 1989. But I would venture a guess that there's less than 28, like less than 28 of these things left in this condition. This thing is absolutely spectacular. Um, ASD was a company that was modifying like exotic cars in Southern California. You would take a, a Ferrari Testarossa or some of these other companies. Actually, ASD I think did the McLaren convertibles for if they chopped the roof off Mustangs and made McLaren convertibles. I think ASC did that. ASC is the company that built the convertible top for Dodge for this car, uh, and it fits. It, the, the top is in excellent condition. It fits very well. Uh, somebody asked him in the questions, uh, does it leak in the rain? And he says, I've never driven it in the rain. So again, <laughs> Good this answer. Car has, been, <laughs> has been pampered its entire life. All the pieces are there. It's a numbers matching drivetrain. Uh, and I want to believe that this car has some blue sky above it. Uh, as I'm studying now, I realize I got it on the wrong day. This car does not close today. It closes tomorrow. But we can still take a guess and, uh, and just bank the bid and we'll figure it out uh, the next day. But what do you think of this thing? Do you remember these at all? Yeah, I do. And you got to love the fact that it exists. It's not something yeah. that I really want or, you know, but the fact that someone in a, you know, in a suit went into a big room full of other dudes with suits and they were probably all smoking cigarettes at the time uh, and yep. said, all right, here you go, guys. Cheap truck. Wait for it. Hold on. Uh, yeah. Convertible top. All yeah. red. What do you guys think? And everyone's yeah. like, yeah, let's do it. J it. Bravo, James. Move forward with your project. And here's, you know, yeah. whatever. I mean, uh, bench seat, red interior. This is just red, all the... Like, velour interior is just amazing. Nothing good about this on paper. And look at that. It had cup holders back in, what, 87. That is... Oh, that's, that's shocking. Uh, what year is this car? Fantastic. 89 89 wow man i could have driven to my high school graduation uh with a slurpee and uh, not spilled a drop look at that with my best girl right next to me uh yeah i love this truck this is so great where where has this thing been for uh 30 something years what how is it so preserved no i mean like where and what like how like like in somebody's like who kept this thing and just hidden away and uh it's just amazing that the thing was preserved i mean looking at the bed of the truck is just like wow um okay where's it gonna land tomorrow not today yeah so so jp this car was fifteen thousand seven hundred dollars when it was brand new and it's sitting at fifteen thousand dollars today it still has a date and two hours to go uh i think that Hemmings is the absolute right place for this car mm -hmm. at or bring a trailer. Uh, and I think this car is going to bring $25,000. I'm all in on this car. One day and two hours to go. I actually think the platform for this is rad for sale. Um, but oh, for sure. Yeah. You know, but they have um, to grow their audience. It yeah. will be the place to sell this car. The next yeah. time it sells, it should be on rad for sale. I would love to drive this. Mm -hmm. car. This would be hilarious for the bid nerds to roll into rad. Yeah. With the top down on this. And, uh, you know, like a boom box up on my shoulder. That would yeah. just like playing some two live crew or something like that. I mean, this is just absolutely like, all the crazy. hicks are driving this and Snohomish. And then lower uh, this car. Absolutely <laughs> lower this car. Yeah, <laughs> this this would be mini truck royalty for sure. I don't remember seeing for anyone sure. make one of these into a mini truck or it sure should have been. Uh I'm sorry, what was your, what was the number that you landed on? Twenty five? Five grand. I think it's got ten more. <clears throat> ten more grand above it. So what do you think? Yeah, mm, uh, no, I, I, uh, I'm gonna say nineteen nine fifty. Nineteen chicken. Nineteen nine fifty. Nineteen nine fifty. There's your Yahtzee right. for tomorrow. Uh, that is tomorrow's right. Yahtzee. You got it. Uh, you got it. You got it's it. it's Redwood royalty. It's kitschy. It's ironic. Uh, it's a great little truck, but uh it, it i mean there's not a lot of dakota uh enthusiasts out there so <laughs> well, i'm yeah. not sure where the market for this is you know who who if it were if it's, it were a ford product maybe um or you know it's just it's 
It's like the typhoons the and stuff. There's a bunch of people. Yeah, this is an ironic car, it's and I think that's what sells it in the teens. Truck, you know? Anything over the yeah. teens, though, it's tough to do the irony uh, sale because that's just a lot of money for. I don't know. Whatever. We'll see what happens. But um, we'll nineteen fifty. That's my that's my take yeah, on that. We'll talk All about right. It on Friday. Yeah. We'll go back to it. Uh, I definitely got the day wrong in that, but I just I was so excited when I. Saw you got it. so excited about the convertible truck. All right. Yeah. Sell Ruby and get yourself a pickup truck. You have your best girl and your dogs all in this thing, man. I think that's a yeah. good time. I think you're on to something. Uh, crowded cab up front. <laughs> good times. All right, guys. Well, that is another episode of Bid Nerds, your daily nerd out on the most interesting cars of the day. And Cars and Bids bring a trailer, P-Car, Mark Emmings, uh, Rad for Sale, whoever else comes up with an auction site overnight. There are there seem to be no shortage of them. Uh, so happy hunting when you're out there looking for the exact right enthusiast car for you. Make sure you hit the subscribe, like, and notification button. I think we have a guest tomorrow, uh, but I'm not going to say Ooh. until I know for sure. Uh, we're gonna oh, just, you're just going right. to have to tune in to find out. Uh, Michael Deeb, anything you want to say before we roll out of here? No, Looking at uh, We're on the heels of a weekend right this now. This will be fun. Yeah, we're we're almost there, and I'll be out. To, I'll be out to visit you early next week. Hopefully, we'll uh, film some cars. Yeah, yeah. Next week, uh, D will be in Las Vegas for a few of those days, so we'll have a couple of uh, in town Monday and Tuesday. We'll have to do the show from your uh, from your living room. That is the truth, guys. All right, thanks for hanging out, everybody. Yeah. See you tomorrow. Later. Get those words.